Hello again everyone, my name is James Shotwell and this is the Music Biz Channel. We just started the year 2022 and I have a ton of predictions for what the year ahead might hold, so let's get right into it. I gotta be honest, this is one of my favorite videos to make all year. In fact, I spent the last several months planning what I was going to say today. Not down to every single word, but just generating ideas. I always try to have at least five predictions for the new year, but this time around, I, I think I have closer to 10. I don't wanna waste your time with a whole bunch of chuffa, so I'm gonna get right into it. Here is everything that I think will happen in the music industry this year and how it's gonna impact you. Number one this year, which I chose because I am the most certain that it is happening, Hybrid events are here to stay. Now when I say that, I mean concerts that you can attend in more than one way. So for example, a concert that also has a live stream component, or a virtual reality concert that you can also see in person, or AR, VR, or some version of this. Moving forward, fans are gonna have more options than ever in deciding how they want to see their favorite artists. Do they want to leave the comfort of their home? Do they want to go to a venue? Do they want to put on a headset and feel fully immersed? There's probably some ways that we haven't even thought of yet. But the fact remains that after two years of this pandemic and possibly several more ahead of us, people have had to adapt. And adaptation leads to increased opportunities and more options for everyone, and that's the reality of right now. So if you haven't already started to think about how you can add hybrid events to your 2022, now is the time to get on it. Number two, this is a continuation of a trend that has been happening for the last several years, and that is that the independent artists are gunning for the top. I think over the last couple of years, thanks in large part to TikTok, we've seen a lot of independent musicians blow up on the charts and then sign with either a major or a major distributor and continue building their career. And I think that that's going to continue even more so in 2022. I mean, TikTok is still as hot as it has ever been. More and more amateur artists are rising to the top, and major labels are really having to to rethink their business models. Because today's amateur musician is so much smarter than they were 20 years ago. You can't wrangle somebody into a five album contract that they know they're never gonna get out of. I mean, you probably can, but not the same caliber of artist you maybe were able to convince 20 years ago. People are smarter. And as a result of that, I think as we see more and more indies start to creep onto those charts, the majors are gonna have to rethink their game. They're gonna have to come up with a new approach to working with two musicians that is more equitable for everybody involved. There's also an element to consider here about pay for play and radio and how that might be forced to change. But for right now, let's just stick with the simplest answer. The indies are coming, the majors better watch out. Number three is gonna sound a little obvious, but I have good reason for including it on this list. My third prediction for 2022 is that streaming will continue to grow, but the reasons are changing a little bit. Now, a lot of streaming services eventually plateau. They raise to a certain level of consumers, and then it more or less kind of evens out. That has yet to happen with any of the big players in music streaming. In fact, a new report released at the end of December 2021 cited Spotify continues to be the fastest growing streaming music platform in the United States, which is pretty crazy when you consider that they already have about 100 million users here in the US. That's, that's absolutely insane. But in 2022, this is going to be quickened a little bit faster because of these pipeline delays. So there are a lot of people that have bought albums on vinyl or CD or just bought merchandise that they haven't gotten yet and the pipeline delays are not going away. In fact, if you were to put in an order for a new vinyl record today in January 2022, the chance that you get it by December is about 75%. And fans will support you to an extent, but at a certain point, people are just gonna go to where they can get the thing that they want, and the thing that they want is always available on streaming. So I think we're gonna see more people adopting streaming. I think we're gonna see more people moving away from physical media, not because they don't love it, but because it's increasingly hard to get your hands on. Number four, in 2022, we are going to see what I like to refer to as the metaverse for dummies. Now you've heard the term metaverse thrown around, whether it's about NFTs or what Facebook is building, or maybe you got one of those Oculus Quest headsets for Christmas. All of those things all apply here. But the problem is that for the vast majority of people, not just musicians, but about, I would say like 75% of all people, they don't really understand what the metaverse is yet or their place in it. Now, it's kind of like having a cell phone. I know that I can download a whole bunch of apps. I know that there are fun things to do. There are things to learn. There are things to experience. But where do I fit in? Now, 
The metaverse does have social media in, a, in certain forms. There's VR chat, there's Horizons World, but in 2022, we're going to see a boom in opportunities for artists at every single level. It's not just gonna be Ariana Grande partnering with Fortnite or Marshmallow partnering with Fortnite. It's going to be everyday musicians working with mid-level brands to put on cool events in the virtual space. It's coming, it's happening this year. I don't know how much will happen this year, but if you're not paying attention to the metaverse right now, you are falling behind. Number five, we are roughly nine weeks away from when we will hit the two year anniversary of the first big lockdown. And when that happened, live music grinded to a halt. And some people have yet to get back on the road, but most people got out on the road at least for a show or two in the back half of 2021. And for the most part, fans came out. Now, there has been some attrition rates, and by that I mean the number of tickets sold are not the number of people who show up at the show. In fact, Live Nation said at one point that about 20% of ticket holders were not showing up to gigs. Now, the reasons for this could be many. They could be sick, they could have forgotten about the show, there could be some conflict, they could have just stopped liking the artist, whatever it happens to be, so people are going to shows. But I think in 2022, concerts are going to fully rebound. Now, I know that there are some fears about the Omicron variant right now, but if you watched our video on that that I already posted, I don't think we're going to go back into lockdown. I think that this is on us to figure out. And the music industry, after two years of off and on again live music and pipeline delays with physical media and everything else that's going on, the music industry really cannot afford another extended break. I mean, and I mean most of the music industry. There's like the one percenters that could probably keep, keep going if we had to go back on lockdown. But all the artists in the middle and below, a lot of them can't afford another, another shutdown. So instead, we're gonna keep moving forward. And fans are going to hit this period of pandemic fatigue, especially once it gets nice outside. Once it's warm again and people are like, well, I took, last, I took the last two summers off due to the coronavirus. You think they're gonna go three? I, I personally doubt it. I would like to think that people will, but I think we're gonna doubt it. I think people are gonna get pandemic fatigue. They're gonna wanna go out and the place they're gonna wanna go is to a rock concert, to a EDM show, to a hip hop show, whatever it happens to be. 2022 is the year concerts not only rebound fully to where they were in 2020, but actually make more money than they made in 2019. That's my prediction. And that would be all five, but I have a few bonus for you. Okay, the first bonus prediction that I have for you is that I think in 2022, there is a very good chance AI, artificial intelligence, will write or co-write a song that charts on the Billboard Top 10. Now, this has been brewing for a long time. If you go on Spotify right now, there are playlists dedicated to AI-built music, and some of it is pretty good. There's not really any big pop songs just yet, but it's coming, and I think 2022 could be the year. What's to say that an AI couldn't suggest a melody that somebody like Charlie Puth or another very digitally connected artist latches onto and builds a song from? That AI would then get a co-writing credit on the song when it came out, and we could see a robot in the Billboard Top 10. How that makes those hard-writing songwriters out there feel, well, that's a whole different discussion, but the age of the robot is here, and it's only a matter of time until they top the charts. My seventh prediction for 2022 is that Twitter will reach a crossroads. Now, the exit of Jack Dorsey already kind of signaled that this was happening, but Twitter is the only social media platform that still refuses to play nice with the music industry. They have no licensing deals in place. So whether you're an artist or a record label, if you share music on Twitter, there's a chance your account could get striked. And while you can argue against those, Twitter will also just delete your account with no recourse unless you know somebody at Twitter HQ. And that's been the policy for going on 13 years or so at this point. But given the popularity of TikTok and the popularity of Instagram and the data that shows younger generations are not adapting to just the text-driven world of Twitter as fast as those other platforms, I think the social media giant really needs to reconsider its position with music. 2022 may be the year that Twitter gets serious about its relationship with the music industry. And if it does, that would be a good thing for everyone involved. Okay, I have three more for you. I don't want to make them all these different clips. They're all pretty short. So let's just burn through them relatively quickly. Number one, I think in 2022, we are going to continue moving further away from music blogs. Now, music blogs are how I got my start in this industry. But let's be honest today. I don't know a lot of people that read them. That's fine. I think what's gonna happen instead in 2022, we might see a rise in fans breaking artists. Now, what I mean by that is that somebody really loves a relatively unknown artist. And let's say that they take their love of that artist and they turn it into a two or three minute TikTok, like a short documentary about how much they love this band, how they fell in love with them, what their songs mean, maybe a couple of song clips, some video clips, some performance clips, and they just explain why the band means the world to them. 
that clip could very easily go viral on TikTok, make a whole bunch of new fans for that artist, and then give that artist a career that they never otherwise had, all because of their fans. Blogs will catch up eventually, blogs will share that video, blogs will talk about that band. But I think that we will start to see, or maybe see an emphasis on the role of fans in breaking new talent. The second thing that I want to talk about is that I highly believe, thanks to a recent news update from Apple, that 2022 may be the year of the animated artwork. Now, this seems like a given, considering the popularity of GIFs, but also the rise in NFTs, which often are movable as well. Apple has announced that in early 2022, Apple Music will begin supporting animated artwork, which means Spotify and everyone else is gonna follow their lead because there's no way they're gonna let Apple have the exclusive on this. So something to consider if you're planning to release music in the new year, maybe there should be an animated element to your artwork. And finally, my final prediction for the new year is that we are going to see more and more artists embrace experiences as merch. And what I mean by that is uh, pretty much as limitless as your imagination. So maybe you charge $10 for a to get a cup of coffee with somebody or to go to the record store with somebody. And maybe you're thinking, I'm not that big yet. If I told my fans they had to pay to get coffee with me, they would laugh. Well, that's understandable. But I like to think about this story involving Linkin Park. When they first got signed, they made a deal within their band that they would sign every autograph that anyone ever asked for. And they kept that promise through about two-thirds of the Meteora album cycle. Now, that was a gigantic ask of the band. I mean, they're one of the biggest bands on the planet at this point, but there came a time when they had to ask themselves about the value of their time and whether or not it was being best spent being mobbed by fans or if there's a better way to develop deep, meaningful connections with their audience. And that's when these experiences come into play. An option for other artists is you could, someone could pay to participate in the making of the album. Maybe they spend a day in the studio with the band. Maybe they play the glockenspiel on a song or something like that. They could join you on stage to play the solo. Um, I know bands like the Foo Fighters love to bring fans up on stage and ask them to play the solo or a part to a hit song while the rest of the band plays along. That could be an opportunity that you could sell. And I know that that might make you feel squeamish, and that's perfectly fine. There are going to be people who hear about artists making money through experiences. It'll make their skin crawl. They'll tweet about it. There'll be protests. But I'll tell you what, there's also going to be a lot of fans who happily line up for guaranteed access to their favorite artist. I love the band Need to Breathe. Getting to meet them is very difficult. But if you told me that for $50, I could have coffee with one of the members, I would pay that in a heartbeat. So it's all about building up, you know, building up that relationship with your fans because at a certain point, they're willing to pay for access to you. When you reach that point, those experiences come into play. Now that was so much information. I thank you for sticking around, but what do you think? What's gonna happen in the music industry? We are at a crossroads that is more than just two streets merging. That's, that's, this is like 18 lanes all colliding at the same time. There's NFTs, there's streaming, there's the debate over royalties, there's pipeline delays, there's the continuing popularity of vinyl. There are cassette labels, there are independent artists, major artists, distributors. There is so much happening all the time and I'm just trying to make sense of it so that you can have a better chance at a successful career. If you haven't done so already, please click the subscribe button down below. Music Biz is here to help you navigate the modern industry and the best way to do that is by joining us through a subscription. It's absolutely free, costs you nothing, and you'll know when new videos come out. I also want to ask that if you've already subscribed, that you go ahead and just pat yourself on the back. It is 2022. You survived 2020. You survived 2021. You are a miracle machine. You are doing great things, and I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm going to be back very soon with a bunch of videos. We're going to make January a big video month for this channel. So if you've already followed, thank you so much. If you haven't, please do. And no matter what else you do, until I see you next time, Take care of yourself because you deserve it.